dragons when I was a boy. Where they went, only a few know. Our story changed the world forever. Olha, todo mundo conhece todos os méritos da Pixar e tudo mais, mas eu vou dizer a verdade. Nenhuma animação me deu tanta alegria nesta última década quanto Como Treinar o Meu Dragão. Eu adoro o Soluço, eu adoro Banguela, eu adoro todos os vikings de Burke, eu adoro todos aqueles dragões. Adoro. Para mim é uma série de desenhos para crianças e não só crianças com espírito de aventura, imaginação fervilhante, desejo de independência. Eu acho que essas são as coisas que é, os desenhos do Dean de Blois é, celebram e são coisas de que eu me lembro com muito carinho da minha infância também. Esse sentimento de descoberta, de libertação. Como treinar o meu dragão 3 é uma graça, é o encerramento da trilogia, é cheio de passagens lindas, passagens divertidas, mas principalmente tem aquela imaginação e aquela tenura dos animadores pelos personagens que me conquistaram desde o começo. Então agora assistam a entrevista com o Dean de Blois, que é o diretor de Como Treinar o Seu Dragão 3. Ok. Dean, welcome to Sao Paulo. Thank I you hear very much. you had a wonderful welcome at CCXP. Yes, it was fantastic. We, we showed some clips to a room full of very enthusiastic fans and they were so loud and cheering and it, it really felt great. Um, you were telling me before how you work on your own for such a long time when you're working in animation and uh, it's wonderful to have a live reaction once in a while, isn't it? Yes, I wish, <laughs> I wish all 300 people that worked on the film could have been there on the stage because it's so validating. You know, we sit in, in, in these kind of small rooms on this campus in DreamWorks and for years just it's just us kind of hoping that we're making something that fans will like and react to and uh, it's, a, it's really amazing to step out and feel that kind of embrace from the audience. I just well, wish all of them could feel it as well. Uh, I think they're going to feel it in time. <laughs> <laughs> I love the two first movies. I Thank you. I love the movies. I love them. Uh, why Vikings? Why did Vikings and Dragons <laughs> come into your mind? What was it, 14 years ago when you started working on this project? Well, it's almost 10 years for me, but there have right. been artists on the show that were there even years before I arrived. Right. So this whole world was designed by a British author named Cressida Cowell. Yes. And she wrote a series of books, I think there are 12 total in her series, uh, about uh, a young boy named Hiccup, the son of a chief, in a world full of of dragons and Vikings, and he didn't fit into his world. Now the narrative of the books is very different from the movies, but the spirit remains the same. And the one thing that Cressida gave us, a wonderful gift, is she crafted a world where there were not just one dragon or one type of dragon, but many different species. And they all have different personalities and abilities and attributes. And so it was really fun to kind of keep designing this endless world of dragons in this sort of fictitious North Sea world of Vikings. Uh, it was so much fun to do this larger than life world. Were you ever interested in Norse mythology before you, you encountered Cressida's world? Yes, I was. Uh, in fact, after I graduated from college in Canada, my first animation job was in Ireland. And Dublin is uh, one of the cities that was uh, colonized yes. by the Vikings. Yes. So there's a great tradition of uh, Viking art and history. And so I, I became very steeped in that world and I, I love it. I mean, it, my imagination just goes on and on. So it's both historically something that I'm very interested in, but also in terms of fantasy, it's wonderful to kind of uh, play with these themes and these sort of visual motifs as well. Um, at this point, How to Train Your Dragon is as much your world and those of the team you work with as uh, of Cressidus, right? And uh, what is special? What, uh, what's, what kind of special things are we going to see in How to Train Your Dragon Hidden World? What well, is in the hidden world? Yes, I mean, the, <laughs> as the title suggests, we were able to finally unveil the ancestral home of all dragons a place that was long rumored by ancient sailors 
to be a land beyond the edge of the world, beyond the sunset. A great waterfall leads to this vast land beneath our world that the dragons inhabit. It turns out that this myth is true. Hiccup and his, and his fellow Vikings and all of their dragons, they go off in search of it. Uh, kind of a desperate quest to evade their enemies and to find a land where they could live in peace and harmony, just disappearing off the map. And in fact, they find it, but really what they find is a land that is the ultimate paradise for dragons, but not at all conducive to humans. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it creates a bit of a dilemma for Hiccup and his people. Um, but it is something that, you know, the dragon world is ever expanding. And I was a boy who grew up loving Star Wars. And one of the things I loved is that the, the universe just kept going. And they could meet new people on new planets. And, and it's similar with our world in that we can have as many islands and lands with different tribes and different dragons as we like. It, it almost writes itself. Uh, what about Hiccup? Uh, what about bringing him to, to life? Uh, in animation. Is there a lot of uh, you in Hiccup <laughs> or anyone you know? Um, it's, he's not just Cressida's creation. Huh. And uh, you know, the leg that he loses and the way that sets him on a path, on a different path than uh, he was, than he would have been as a Viking. Uh, how did he come to life? Well, I love, I love characters that I can identify with and I was a bit of a, an odd kid, I guess. I wasn't very much into sports. I loved to be by myself and draw. I was um, into comic books and maybe things that weren't so cool when I was a kid. So I think Hiccup represents the type of, the type of teenager that hasn't found his place, right. you know, in the first film at least. And um, we often try to hide what we think are our weaknesses. Um, and try our best to fit in with everyone else. And Hiccup's story is really one that teaches us it's okay to be who you are. And maybe what you see as your weakness is actually a strength, a strength that could change the world. And if you embody it, if you embrace it and just be yourself, then maybe the world starts to change around you. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. That's beautiful. And it's a lovely movie. <laughs> it's a <laughs> lovely you. series. I Thank you say. very much. I really Did appreciate it.